All right, let's keep moving this project along. Today we're going to tackle the Z-axis, the belt drive system, and the drag chains. Let's go. I believe this is the one we need for the carriage plate. Looks good. This is going to get installed right here. We need to tap five M5 holes on each side. All 10 of my holes are tapped. Got some M4 by 14 screws. Got four more parts here that we need to build the Z axis assembly. PCB Way has generously sponsored all the custom aluminum parts for this project. You may know of PCB Way as a one stop solution for PCB manufacturing. But they also offer a wide range of other manufacturing services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. This is a really great service for when you need parts but don't have the manufacturing capabilities in-house or even just want to save time. I used a total of 33 custom machined aluminum parts for this laser build. 18 unique parts, some with multiple quantities of each. I had the CNC machines to produce them but ordering them through PCB Way has saved me a considerable amount of time. Ordering was easy. I just exported the step files from Fusion 360 and then drag and drop the files on their website, select the quantity and material. They also offer a number of different finishing options for machine parts. I went with bead blasting and black anodizing and the parts look amazing. It took 26 days to receive the 33 finished parts from the date of ordering. There was some extra processing time because of the finishing options I chose. As I said before, anybody who's interested in convenience, I'll be sharing all my custom aluminum parts for the project on PCB Way uh, when it's complete. Uh, it'll just be a link where you can go there and order the parts if you want. Um, you've probably seen how many holes I've had to tap for the project. So I'll definitely include uh, the drawings for that so um, you can order everything tapped as well to make it super easy. Um, so anyway, stay tuned for that link and thank you PCB Way. Nice. Cool, looks good. Pretty cool. So it turned out really nice. Here are all the components we have to build the Z-axis. I have this 2060 extrusion, the couple guide rails on it. Then all my custom parts from PCB Way. This is the top plate. It'll be attached up there to hold the motor. And the back sticks out to attach the drag chain. Um, so it'll go there. Then the bottom plate. It'll go here. Then this one gets attached to the slides. Then my ball screw. You can see that it sits right in here. That's a 1204 ball screw. And then this other plate sandwiches it in the middle. And those will be bolted together. And that gets attached up here. Then there should be clearance. And a ball screw to go up the middle. That'll get mounted to those blocks. Cool. Let's start uh, tapping some holes and getting this all assembled. So I need M3s for these four on this bottom piece. That one's done. This top plate's gonna need M4s right here. I don't have a proper tap that fits my electric arm uh, for M4, so I'm gonna have to use the drill for these. Both of these plates need M4s here on the ends. These I'm going to do by hand since uh, they're not through holes. I can get a little deeper this way. Those four are done. Let's move on to the M5s. All the M5 holes are tapped. This piece is ready to install. This piece needs six M5 holes here, 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 here. That piece should be ready to go. Just one more now. Okay, this final piece has a couple different sets of holes. 
uh, one set for mounting the manual focus BT210 head and the other one for the autofocus head. So I have um, these six for the manual focus and these four for the autofocus. So I'll tap those out M5. Those are all done. All right, I found my first error in my parts. I don't know if I uploaded the wrong file or if they just didn't put in the features or what, but anyways, these two are gonna go together and these six holes right here should have counter bores. So the head of the screw is inset for mounting the laser source and they're not there. So I guess I need to set up a cam file and get those four milled out and then we can move on. Got my cam file all set up here. Gonna counter bore those six holes and then do a chamfer on the edge. Okay, I've got the material here in the vise. So let me zero off that front left corner and then we can run the job. All right, let's probe this front corner. I got my file loaded, so let's send it. Okay, cool, that should work. The last thing I need to do before assembling all this is cut this extrusion to length. But uh, before I do that, I wanna take and install the ball screw on its top and bottom plate so I can take a precise measurement uh, between the two. I have my 3D model, but I just wanna double check before I make the cut on here. All right. I need to take this snap ring off this bearing. There we go. this needs to get screwed into there. All right, I've got some eight millimeter M3 screws here. All right, cool, that's installed. Now, let's see if we can get this back in here, the snap ring on. Cool, nice. All right, I'll do the top plate. All right, got some M4 by 16 screws here. So let's see, let's do the top here. All right, cool. All right, that'll go like that. And my beam needs to go right between the two. So let me take a measurement here, see where to cut it. All right, I've used some one, two, three blocks to get everything lined up and square. Looks like we're at 241, maybe just slightly over that. So I'll go a little long and then trim it down if I need to. All right, it's cut to size and that looks pretty good. So I need to tap the extrusion holes to be M5 and then we can get all this assembled. All right, I forgot one final thing. Now that I cut down this extrusion, uh, my rails are just slightly too long. So let me mark those out and I'll take them over to the angle grinder and cut those off real quick. Let's start putting this all together. First, I'm gonna put some T-nuts on these rails so we can slide them in. Okay, I got all my T-nuts started on both of these. So let's see if we can slide them on here. I'm just gonna loosely Secure them right now. We'll make sure they're parallel whenever we put the plate on the front of it. All right, let's add this plate on top. Okay, yeah, there's, it's feeling a lot tighter. So I'm gonna loosen one, I'm gonna 
Tighten down one rail and loosen the other one. Then I'll slide it around to get it into position. All right, nice. Let's get some T-nuts in here and then we can get this piece installed to the top and bottom plates. So now this is gonna go here. All right, and then five by 20 screws here. Okay, now I have several angle brackets to install in the back here. All right, cool. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. You just slide this up into position here. And we'll attach this front plate. Now we just need to attach the ball nut to the top here. I've got some corner brackets here, which is how this will be attached to the X gantry plate. All right, cool. And get my motor coupler installed. Right. Let's get this bowl nut attached. <clears throat> Some M4 by 16 screws here. All right. Okay, I can't really mount the Z axis until we uh, uh, clamp down the belt to the X axis here for behind. So I'm just gonna temporarily mount, mount it for now. Uh, so we can see what it looks like, but it's gonna have to come off and I'll have to put more screws in it eventually, but. All right, well, it's gonna go something like that whenever uh, time to finally install it. To move on, we need to start getting some motors and pulleys installed for the belts. So let's see what we have here. These should be the motor mounts. Cool, they look nice. Let's get them installed. I need to tap all these holes for M5 threads on both sides, one to accept the motor and the other to accept the cap to cover it. So let's get those threaded. All the motor mounts have been threaded, so let's get these on the machine. All right, I've got some M5 by 20 screws, so let's get these bolted on. Those look nice, so let's, those are the two Y-axis motor mounts, so let's get the X-axis on. All right, cool. All right, let's open the rest of these custom parts from PCB way, so we can get ready to install the motors. I think this is everything now. Everything looks really nice for these three belt tensioners. Um, I need M5 here, 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 and one in the end. All right, those are all tapped, ready to go. Now, uh, those don't get tapped, those are through holes. All these belt clamps need M3, so let me get those tapped. I've got all the M3 holes tapped for these belt clamps. So it looks like we can start installing this hardware. I have these two done. Idler pulley slash belt tensioners. Let's get this last one together here. So I'll get my screw. Sure. 
tighten these grub screws. This other washer on top here. Okay. All right, cool. Let's get these installed on the machine. So I have two M5s that just hold it in place so it can slide in and out. And I have uh, four M20 or four M5s that are 20 millimeters long. We're gonna try that, see if it gives us enough travel for tensioning. And these will just get tightened down against the plate to push it out. See how it slides in and out? And these will put pressure on it to hold it out whenever we get there. Okay, last one for the x-axis belt. Okay, that should work. I've got these three five to one reducers. So we can go ahead and get these installed and ready to put the belts on. So first I need to put these pulleys on. Okay, I checked. It looks like the pulley needs to go as far down as it can go on here. All right, let's attach those to the machine. Got the reducers mounted for the x-axis and both on the y. So cool, we're about ready to install the belts. I've got some aluminum angle here, one inch wide, and I need to cut some down for supports for the uh, drag chains. I've drilled some holes and got some drop-in T-nuts ready to go in these rails, so let's get them installed on the machine. I go back here, top slot. All right, let's try this side rail over here. I have one more little piece here. I've laid out the drag chains on them so you can see how they're going to go right across the rail. And this will attach up here. And then on the X axis, similarly, I'll set there and then attach to that top plate. Here's my GT5 15 millimeter belt. I've tried to install it. Okay, I have one of my belt clamps and the spacer. I've already installed them on this side. There's the spacer and the belt clamp. And I have four M3 by 30 screws here. I'm gonna insert the belt in and then tighten these down to clamp it on the belt. Then we'll open that up. The belt should slide in there. As I mentioned before, I had to remove my Z slide assembly to put these belt clamps on. I've already done this side. see now I've got the belt clamps prepared for both the Y axes and for the X carriage there. All right so I think we can try getting some belts on here. Let's snug it down on this side. All right now let's pull up the slack here and see how much belt we need to cut off here. All right, let's feed this side in. I'll try to pull it up kind of snug here and get it set the clamp. All right, now I can put some tension on it with this belt tensioner slash idle pulley. So let's screw these in a little bit. Right, that feels pretty good. You can see I have the belts installed for that y-axis and the other side. I suspect the x-axis will be a little bit more difficult because it's a little harder to access, but 
Let's give it a shot and see what happens. Let's see if we can get it clamped in here. All right, we're attached on one side. All right, that wasn't so bad. Let's take out the slack. All right, all right, let's try that. The belts are ready, so let's get the drag chains on and the mechanicals are almost done. I have 3D printed a couple of motor covers here for the uh, Y-axis motors. So let's get those installed. And this one too. Cool. My other motor cover is done here. All right, here's the motor cover for the x-axis. You can see it has this additional feature here for that's where we're going to mount the drag chain uh, in a little bit. So let's see if we can get this on here. This might be a little tricky to reach. Is my wrench going to fit? Oh, just barely. It was a little fiddly to get those two back screws, but it's on there now. Now we have a place to mount the drag chain on the top side. Now that the uh, belt's installed, we can get the Z-axis remounted permanently. So I've dropped in a bunch of screws here. And let's see if we can get them into position. And... All right, that feels pretty good. I have three more to add on the back side. Okay, cool. All right, drag chains for the X-axis. Uh, I had, had originally in my design had it come in around top to mount, but it looks like if I take one link out, um, it'll fit this full length and attach right here on the bottom. And it actually has a small enough turn radius to fit under there. So I'm going to try that. All right, that end's attached. All right, now this side. That looks like it's going to work. I'll demonstrate here. This is pretty good. This is gonna go up here. And I can't get a screwdriver up here, so I'm gonna have to go up to the bottom. All right, that feels good. To allow me to get to the front. To the back. I've been 3D printing these idler pulley covers. three so let's get those installed got some in three by ten screws here all right cool let's do the other two okay we'll do the x-axis the same way cool i believe the mechanicals are all done uh it's taken a while to get to this point but um really happy with how everything went together so i think we can start installing the motors and electronics and actually get this thing moving all right that's all we have time for today i'll leave any product links in the description uh thank you so much to pcbway uh, for sponsoring this project check out their website pcbway.com head over and check out skyfire's website if uh, you're interested in this build and want to start pricing out components Thank you to all my Patreons for making all this possible. Thank you guys.